Diana was in mythology, the goddess of the hunt. And she made a deal with Zeus that she would be allowed to remain pure, which means that she could live out her life in the wilderness as she saw fit. And one of the conditions of that was you were not supposed to see her nude. If you were going to make a list of the leading sculptors of the 19th century, you would put Augusta St. Gaudens on the top of that list. Madison Square Garden was going to open in around 1891, and Stanford White asked St. Gaudens to make a weather van, an operable weather van for the top of Madison Square Garden. It quickly became the biggest sensation in New York City. And Stanford White was so pleased with the sculpture that he asked his buddy St. Gaudens for a version that he could keep in his garden. After this life in the garden, uh, it fell into need of repair. And so in 1928, Stanford White's family sends the sculpture to a craftsperson in, in New York City named Attilo Contini. He built a mold from that cement garden sculpture that he used to cast the famous Diana bronzes that are now at Bass Hall in Fort Worth and the future of the American Wing at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So that cement Diana was actually the mother of multiple um, metal Dianas. Somebody in charge of the safety of the collection was doing a basement inventory and came across the crate um, that include the two crates actually that included the halves of Diana. So I was really surprised when we went down to the basement and we opened up the crate to see how delicate and elegant the sculpture looked, even though it was in two halves. I asked around, who do I need to ask to kind of engage in a diagnosis of the sculpture? And everybody recommended the conservators at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. And um, so I called them and they recommended Adam Jenkins. There's a very simple way of figuring out how much of this sculpture has been repaired and how much is original material. And that is you have to find a company that inspects bridges and tunnels and concrete structures. Those gamma radiographs showed that for a 124 year old sculpture, she was in superb condition. One aspect of her injuries was she had some surface cracking. And so Adam was able to vary, it's a very common practice in sculpture conservation to create little holes in the areas of cracking and inject adhesive into those, into those holes to fill the cracks. It's kind of like giving Diana Botox. He was able to make a plastic mold of the interior of the hollow torso and then have that mold scanned and a 3D printed, basically, mannequin form created. And so that 3D printed form sits inside her torso and locks over the two pieces of metal that come out of her waistline. And a screw is inserted into that 3D printed mannequin form to connect the two halves safely together. Really what we've done here through the conservation process is acquired a new artwork because we've had this icon of American art in our basement not able to be seen. And the conservation process that Adam undertook meant that we brought a really important historical artwork back to life.